Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League, the Champions League and the Europa League as well. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl. Here are today's topics. We'll discuss the fallout from the international break and how it will affect the upcoming Premier League weekend fixtures, what Cristiano Ronaldo's return to Old Trafford this weekend might be like, and we'll preview some of the key matches this weekend. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. Okay, Rob, let's start with this fallout from the international break stuff mm. and, and COVID kind of uh, rules from different federations and different countries to the governments. Um, there's a lot going on. So I just kind of mm. summarize it here. I've just got a little report here. It says um, reports from, from reports are that federations from Brazil, Mexico, Paraguay, and Chile will look to enforce a FIFA rule that would prevent players from those countries from playing for their Premier League clubs because they were not allowed to play for their national teams when caught up this past international break. Yeah, and it's an important statement, Rob, because when you think of the quality of players we're talking about, for Liverpool, mm -hmm. we're talking about Alisson, Fabinho, uh, Roberto Firmino, for Man City, we're talking about Edison and Gabriel Jesus, Thiago Silva from Chelsea, Fred from Manchester United, <coughs> Rafinha from Leeds, Raul Jimenez from Wolves, Miguel Almiron from Newcastle, and Francis Seralta from... Mm -hmm. Watford and several players will miss out this weekend as well because they will not have quarantined after playing these games for their countries. So we've got Lo Celso, Romero, Davison Sanchez for Spurs, Martinez, Emilio Martinez and Emi Buendia for Aston Villa. It's just, we're at a stage, Rob, where it, it's becoming difficult if you're going to go and play international football and then come back into the Premier League, it looks like you're going to miss a week. Yeah, uh, 10 days. Uh, 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 10 days of action, which could be two games, which at this stage of the season could could be six points. That could be a big yeah. difference in, in the way that the season goes. I mean, this can't continue, Rob, can it? I mean, it, it's almost an untenable situation. And I'm just thinking as a player, well, you know, I remember pulling on the national shirt and then having great pride in, in doing that. But... I think it, it was, it's going to start to question whether it's worth going away. Well, listen, of, of taping this podcast, Rob, th these mm. are the rules that are right now. Now, we know that there's negotiations going on with certainly the UK government to say, can there be some way that they don't have to quarantine for 10 days when they yeah. return from these red, amber countries or whatever it mm -hmm. is? There's Redless, specifics yeah. on that. Um, there's also talk about FIFA, this FIFA five-day rule that um, that these four countries are going to invoke to say, listen, they didn't they didn't release the players that we asked for. We want to make sure they they can't play in their countries for five days. Five days is less than ten day quarantine. To, to teams in the future say, you know what, We're, they're not going because and we'll suck yeah. up the five day because it's only going to be probably one match week. Or some of them it might not be. Champions League football mm -hmm. coming in, Rob as well, midweek. Yeah. Um, it's a real mess, and I think the worry is that. We've got another international break in October, another one in November, Rob. It's going to be the same situation. There's a ton. I mean, um, you know, the, 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 it's a lot of players that, that could miss a lot of football. But aren't we talking, there's two situations to this, isn't it? It's the players who don't go because there's the countries yeah. who are on the red list. And, and, and then, then they, they, they evoke this FIFA rule. But yes. really, the, the, those uh, federations don't have to. I mean, I think um, mm. most is a good example of he didn't go to play for Egypt because they were on the red list country and Egypt haven't evoked this rule. So Mo Salah is now being allowed to play for Liverpool. But obviously the likes of Brazil, Mexico, Paraguay and Chile uh, are not going that route. Now that just seems like they're not working with the clubs. They're kind of forcing their hand and, and, and almost like flexing their muscles when I'm not sure to whose benefit. And, and to like follow on from... Yeah, go on. I was just Sorry, going to say, before say... you finish, bad relationships between federations and Premier League clubs, there's only going to be one winner. Yeah, well, the football clubs, if it, mm. if it goes down to that. what To follow on from your point, Rob, yeah. Richarlison, Richarlison, who again, didn't, didn't go to international uh, yeah. duty for yeah, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. Brazil are not insisting that he gets the five-day FIFA ban if you like for, for playing for his club 
Um, mm. Basically, because he's been a good egg, and he and they let him go. For, they let Everton go uh, for him to go in the Olympic Games for Brazil with Charleston. Did a great yeah, job he there. Gold Cup and it, yeah, yeah, he, he did all this stuff. So the Brazil were like, no, not with Charleston. Everton, you're okay. We like him and you. <laughs> you can play, but other so now, so, it's, it's pick and choose. I mean, it almost pick and doesn't feel is. right. Like. Be consistent then, either do it across the board or not. Yeah. I mean, so it's a FIFA thing as well, Rob, isn't it? It's a yeah, FIFA thing. FIFA, of course, you've got it, listen, yeah. it's there, obviously it's there, Rob, to protect clubs from saying, mm. um, you know, so Mo Salah, for example, you know, you, you've been brilliant for us. We don't want yeah. you to go there because I need you for the next couple of games. It, there's got yeah. to be some kind of consequence for that, I suppose. But, you know, this just seems, and I know it's unprecedented times, and I know this virus is going on and on and on and on. Yeah. I just, I take one thing our producer talked about, producer Jorge, we had a little mm. chat beforehand, Rob, and he's saying, it's a suggestion, it's a great suggestion, but it's going to be too late to do anything. He's basically saying is, given what we're seeing now, isn't there an argument that for October, November and March, forget about yeah, the, the people, yeah. forget about those international breaks, more Premier League games in, maybe some midweek games, so that the Premier League season and the European seasons, domestic seasons can end mm. May, like yeah, April, May, May mm. and then say, okay, international players, go off your t teams and go and get all your, your your qualifying done for the World Cup, because that's what it is right mm. now. All these teams are trying to find the dates. There's hardly any dates. We know that. Mm. You know, it's, it's the, the, the international break, Rob, teams, there's three qualifying games going on and that amount of a 10-day window, whatever it is. It's just... So much football. Again, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, in um, principle, it's a good idea. Um, how easy it's going to be to do. There's got to be good... At the moment, my worry is that the communication between the clubs through the federations and through FIFA is not strong enough, Rob. It's not helpful. Um, and at the moment, everybody's just looking out for their own game. And that, that's not that, that's not going to solve the yeah. problem, solve the issue. Um, at the moment, the players get stuck in, in the middle. I remember many moons ago, and I uh, hate popping back, but I remember when I was playing for Jamaica, there were times when I had a relationship with the Jamaican FA and, and the coach where I wasn't flying out to all the games, Rob, the amount of games, of qualifying games. We'd already mm. sat down and said, I was a Premier League player it, on a different um, fixture schedule, and we picked the games when I would go because I, be, I couldn't afford to be missing for... 10 days, two weeks of a season. That could be three or four games. It might be the difference for us, whether we're above a line or below a line or mid-table or, or pushing at the top. And mm -hmm. it was only that communication, it was only those relationships that allowed me to, to further it and go on and have the, the, the Jamaican career that I had. And I just feel for some of these star players now, they've, they've got to be in a position where they can talk with the clubs, with the federation and work out the best uh, solution for, for all parties involved. Just, just going back to this weekend, Rob, and who might be most affected. Mm. It looks like, I mean, Liverpool are away at Ellen Road. They're playing Leeds, yeah. uh, which is a not an easy game. They could be without Alisson, their mm. goalkeeper, of course, Fabinho, midfielder, and Roberto Firmino, mm. who I think has an injury as well. That's three players that that that, that might knock them out. You look at the ones yeah. that that did go and happened to quarantine. Uh, you mentioned them: Davison Sanchez, Christian Romero, and Giovanni Lo Celso. I mean, for other teams, you know, it's Thiago Silva from Chelsea, it's Fred from Man United. Others can probably handle it okay. Yeah. But who knows what the next set mm. of fixtures is going to be on the back of the next break in October and, and November. It's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a Man, bit... Man, is, City, Man it? City is an interesting role because obviously Edison is part of that and, and Gabriel Jesus. But from Man yeah. City's point of view, you've got Edison. Uh, the number two is um, Jack... Zach, Zach, Zach Stephen. Stephen. Yeah. Who, who's out. Already, so we may be going to, to our, our, our good friend Scott Carson, <laughs> who I think had his pipe and slippers up and, and was just getting ready to settle in the garden for retirement. I mean, yeah. we saw him, didn't we, against Newcastle, I think, after they won the title last year. I think, yeah, 40, it, it wasn't 40, great. 10 years of age, it wasn't great. It was a bit creaky, you needed a bit of WD 40 <laughs> on the joints to, to get down and handle the ball. I mean, it could be that Manchester City go into the game this weekend, Rob, having. Yeah. Uh, against Leicester, you know, it's a decent Leicester team that's motivated with, with yeah. Scott Carson in goal. I mean, that just yeah. doesn't quite feel right, fair. And it's just as fans of the league, Rob, like, to mm. finalise it for me, it's like, yeah. we're so excited for this league, we're so excited mm. for the teams at the top and how they've really, like, isn't it such a blimmin' annoyance, it's a frustration that, you know, we ain't going to see, like, through quarantining, like, I've just gone, yeah. we're, just, we're both working this weekend, Rob, and we're going through yeah. our 
you know, all this, all the preparation notes and all the injury reports and everything else. There's so many teams have got like, well, quarantine and COVID issues or mm. FIFA ban. I mean, it's God, it's so frustrating. We all yeah. want to see the best teams. We've just in a, we're just in a transfer window. Again, players are moving around. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, you just want, I just can't wait to see the teams play in their best version of themselves, given the new signings. But these international breaks, and I know they're necessary, and we love international football. It's just like, come on, like, it's just it's just difficult to see at the moment. Now, what I just don't know going forward, Rob, what FIFA are going to do, whether we're going to have the same situation in October, November, um, because the virus isn't going to change, you know, predominantly in the next kind of few weeks. So, yeah, it's just no, something so we, we thought we'd mention. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and the other thing, Robert, I, in, in sort of closing for me, just that the, there was a there was a time, there was a, a period, maybe let's say three, four, five years ago, where I think the general public had, had done with international football. It was almost a bit like club football became more important than the yeah. international games and the old break. People dropped their interest in football, and and that's been rejuvenated again. I think the pandemic helped, great Euros helped, some great football competitions over the summer, the start of the Premier League. Everybody's back loving football. And I think international football has to be careful that it doesn't get soiled again and have that effect where people are not supporting it in the, in the manner that they are now. Because it'd be a shame international football has its place and, and we've seen at its very best is, is, is a fantastic spectacle. But with some of the things that are going on, I think it's going to leave a bad taste in people's mouths. And, but not, uh, not, not if Arsene Wenger gets his way, Robbie Earl. I was just going to mention that, my friend. <laughs> the great Arsene. I, I don't even know where my Arsene pyjamas are. I think they're, they're in retirement with Scott Carson. But yeah, the great Arsene Wenger's come with a, salute, a um, suggestion of every two years biannual World Cup. I mean... First, my initial reaction, don't mind it. What? Don't mind it. Come on. Every two years. Every two years. World, World Cup. Cup. No. I, 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 don't, we love it, don't we? We, we love, love it. World Cup. And we love it being special and we love it every four years. That makes <sighs> a it a long time you, to wait. You, you have it and then you, you 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 sit on your crown and everybody else has a chance to come out. We get our Euros in between, so that's our little kind of Yeah, we still you still get those everywhere. in between. You still get the Confederations Cups in between. I mean, World Cup. I just, I just, well, I just. Well, how do we get a Euros in between? Uh, you do like the off, the off, like season, one, the year, off years. one year, yeah, one year. Yes, every, a World yes. Cup, Euros, World Cup, Euros. <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. No, <laughs> must be. Come on, even the good, even the great awesome Wenger, I think it, it, it's been in, on the sherry for that one. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. I'm right, quite sure how you got to that one. Right, let's move it on, my friend. Biggest story yes. of this weekend. Hit it. What is it? Big, biggest story of many weekends, is yeah. CR7 in number seven, back in the red of Manchester United, at Old Trafford, full house against Newcastle United. I mean, doesn't get much bigger than that. One of the all-time greats returning to the Premier League. And there's been a lot of hype and there's been a lot of um, marketing and there's been a lot of headlines. But quite rightly so, mate, when he's that good, when he's that big, when he makes that influence, when he makes that carries that much attention that he, he affects uh, share price and stock values and, and the shirt sales. We're talking about a special individual, a special yeah. player, and we quite rightly should be lauding that he's back in the Premier League for the next couple of years. Some some people, Rob, would argue that he's the best player that's ever played the game. You know, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're one of those that thinks right now between Messi and Ronaldo and those that, that, that and a significant amount prefer Ronaldo... Mm -hmm. You know, it's that's what we're talking here. One of the best players that's ever played the games coming back to the Premier League in, in a a squad that's getting been get been get been getting better the last two or three years under the yeah. of uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. The recruitment's been really good. Um, I, I want to attack this in two ways, Rob, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. I think first of all, how good is he going to be, and then mm -hmm. the second part of it is how does he fit into the team? How does the team look and kind of. You know, with him in it and, and what it yeah. does to other players. So, first of all, just on his impact, Rob, in terms of yeah. you know how good is he going to be at Manchester United, given he's 36 years of age? He's a different player now that left, of course, a wide player that that, that was incredible in different ways. Now he's an out and out goal scorer. Yeah. Give yeah. me, give me your sense of how successful, how um, good he's going to be come the end of the season. I, th I think my headline of, of, of 
announcing how good he's going to be, what influence will he be, the effect he has, is for me, Rob, there's absolutely no downside. I know people and the common nature, maybe the world we live in, that everybody will start writing good things. And then yeah. there, there'll be a, a number of people who will write, well, he's 36 years of age. Well, he might affect the dressing room. Oh, will he be, you know, will Pogba have a, have a problem yeah. and all that stuff. Don't get it. Don't believe it. Don't think. First of all, I want to talk about his age. 36 years of age. I don't know if you saw the, the two goals he scored for Portugal makes him now the top uh, international goal scorer. Um, pulled off his shirt, Robbie Musto. That's not a body of a, of a normal 36-year-old <laughs> man. I mean, this guy's a freak. He's an absolute freak of nature. He, he, he's probably got the, the, the numbers and the stats and, the, and, the, and the, the, the body fat and all the things of a 26-year-old. So he's not your normal 36-year-old. In terms of what, what he can do, and get, he scored more goals than Romelu Lukaku in the league last season. More yeah. goals. Yeah. So his output isn't, isn't going to get any worse. What's he going to add to Manchester United? We've been saying for what, um, a while, there's probably two spots Manchester United need to fill. Uh, well, three spots if you think of, of, of the, cent the centre-back that they've got. Jaden Sancho, a wide player. A centre-forward. And then probably to add all the things, maybe a defensive midfield player. They've got all three of those but one maybe the defensive midfield player. Yeah. So he, he, he starts to, to bring you the... Everyone's going, Lukaku's the final piece, the missing piece for Chelsea. Ronaldo can be the missing piece for, for Manchester United. And he brings, Rob, a mentality. that Some people are saying, ooh, could have an effect on some of the young players. Could hold Greenwood mm. back. I don't mm. get it. I see Cristiano Ronaldo, who's come in and lauded to Alex Ferguson, talked about mm. what this club means to him was going to put his arm around Mason Greenwood and go, you, my friend, are going to be the best English striker in the league. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to show you. You're going to watch me. You're going to follow me. I'm going to teach you how to become a top professional and centre forward. I just, Rob, don't see any negatives that can come out of this from, Man from, from Manchester United and all the point of view. Probably the, the biggest one, if I had to say, will be... Is this manager good enough to handle what is now in front of him? And that's the question that we've been asking for the last 18 months with the manager. Hmm. I think just, just okay, so on the first part for me, and of course, I, I agree with a lot of that. I, I really strongly agree with the mentality, Rob. And it, it's almost like it doesn't matter what he's won before as a, as a hmm. team player, as an individual. His insatiable drive to win is is extraordinary and you know everybody's got their opinions about Messi and Ronaldo I mean there's been there's no other player on the planet that's as that's as driven and mm. as motivated to win as him and you add into that some of the stuff he said about Sir Alex Ferguson I've read even more this last couple of weeks about when he signed for the club and and what uh, Sir Alex Ferguson did for him. I mean, there's a really, really strong, respectful link between those two, which will drive it on even more. The excitement that the fans will get, Robbie Earl, and we know a ton of Man United fans, mm -hmm. that they're, they're, they're like they're like flipping excited beyond belief at the moment. It's a little bit sickening, I've got to be honest. I'm a little bit mm -hmm. sickened. Like, it's, it's so, they're so, like, just they're smiling all the time. The feel-good factor around Old Trafford is going to go through the roof. Um, in terms of his performances, Robin, his, his numbers... <clears throat> Uh, I have got a, 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 a slight doubt that the Premier League's level defensively, shape-wise, uh, mindset of a lot of teams might make it a little harder than people. Listen, I'm not saying he's not going to score. I, I, <laughs> I can see your face. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not saying, I'm not because... saying, I know, I know, I know, but because his numbers are, are ridiculous. I just, I just, I have a little doubt he'll get he'll score quite as many as everybody thinks, and it might be a little bit tougher than most expect for him to get the big number of goals. He's got what's he got now, Rob? He's got thirty-five games. Um, three yeah. games have already gone. Yeah. Thirty-five games. It's he's not. Man, he's not going to play in all of them, Rob. He's going to play what, like thirty Premier League, maybe if he's thirty fit. ish. I mean, one in, one in two is fifteen goals. Um, three kicks. 
Free kicks, penalties. Yeah, he'd be on penalties, wouldn't he? I imagine he'd be on all that I stuff. I would have thought he'd be on penalties in, in free kicks. I, I, I listen, um, he's going to get... I just, I just, my I only question saying, with that, my only little... question with that, Rob, and, and, and I hear your point, and, and it's a valid point, but I would, I would, I would... I'll go back 12 months to Patrick Bamford. He's been a championship player. Oh, he's not good enough for the Premier League. Comes in the league and scores 17 goals last season. 70. Ollie Watkins, you know, championship player. This guy's been at another level to them. And I know you're talking about the Premier League and the speed and the better defending. This guy scored goals in Italy. This guy scored like 60 odd goals in, in Spain. Yes, I know Spain has different levels and maybe mm. they're, they're not at the same. Mm. This guy's, as a, it's, it's not, he's not like a championship kid who we're thinking, mm, what's he? He's playing the Premier League. He knows it. He, he scores international goals for fun. I, I, I just listen. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's going to get 30 goals in the Premier League, but the, if he plays enough games and given the opportunities, he will be 15 to 20 goals for Manchester United. I'm just trying to think of an over under number, Rob. Like the, the I, I, I think 18 goals over or under Premier League goals. Uh, you've got to give me games. I, I've got to know the games. I've, I've got to get over. I don't care. It's not. It's not. I know, uh, I know. I, I, I'm hitting you right now. I'm hitting you right now, and and I'm thinking under. Under you know, eighteen. It, yeah. If you, I mean, he's going to play thirty. I mean, I, I'm saying with 30, eighteen. With 30, with thirty games playing for Manchester United. You think he'll get more than eight? I mean, he gets penalties and free kicks. I think he get he can get twenty goals. Twenty. Yeah. All right. We'll see. All right, next, next yeah. part of it, Rob, is where he fits into the team because I'm fascinated mm. and everybody's fascinated about how yeah. he's going to fit in. Yeah. Where's he going to play? Where's everybody yeah. else going to play? So, I mean, um, he's going to play in his favourite position, Rob. First of yeah, all, he's let's get that forward. right. Yeah. He's going to play centre forward. Yeah, yeah, he's going to play centre forward. Correct. What, what does that mean to everybody else, though, Rob? Where's everybody else play? Mason Greenwood, that we have, I, I mean, particularly me, I've loved what yeah. he's done so far and yeah. what he can potentially do. How much, yeah. first of all, on Greenwood, how much could it um, inhibit his development? Um, I don't think as much as people think because I think th this kid's talent will speak for itself. I think he, Mason Greenwood might get pushed wider in, in on a number of occasions, which still can 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 learn his his, his trade. Might actually be um, take away a bit of physicality from him that that people can get tight to him and stop him playing when he's central. Um, there'll be games when he will play when Ronaldo maybe starts on the bench. There'll be games whether it's Champions League, certainly Cup games, that he'll still get his numbers. I still think Mason Greenwood will play a healthy number of games. I think more of interest, and, and I think Jaden Sancho, once he gets up to speed, will play in one wide position. I think Greenwood will play in one position. And I think in more in threat, Bob, for me, might be Marcus Rashford. Yeah. Marcus Rashford may not be may not be a shoe in when he's fit to start in Manchester United best eleven. Well, that's that's what's interesting. So if we're going to say Ronaldo as a number nine, and this is the yeah. best team if he had to, you know, mm. on the so we're thinking wide right with Mason yeah. Greenwood's left foot coming in. That's probably going to be his position for a little while. Yeah, Greenwood yeah. At wide right. Mm -hmm. So wide left, which has been, by the way, it's been. Um, Rashford, it's been Martial, yeah. it's been uh, Jaden Sancho, and it's been Paul Pogba, Pogba. right? Mm. Which we'll get to. Who's going to play the left side? Jaden Sancho when Jaden Sancho starts. Right, paying okay. 100, 100 million, yeah. uh, you know. Okay, so Sh Sancho left. Bruno Fernandes yeah. is number ten, and Mason Greenwood is, is the right side of player. Mason uh, Greenwood stroke Marcus Rashford. I think that's going to be a bit of how form. Is okay, on that one. So Paul Pogba, you are now yeah. committing. To a central midfield position, yeah, in 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 their best team. So yeah. you, you trust him to play alongside either Fred or McTominay to win this Premier League title week in week out. Do you trust him to do that? Um, like he plays there for France, or has played there for yeah, France. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that hasn't been managed. Not been. He hasn't been played there a lot, Rob. Not going to socialize. Not trusting that, him but, much. But we, but the signing of Ronaldo changes it all dynamics, Rob, and and quite rightly so. There are times when I believe Manchester United can go more of a 4-3-3. High from one side, Sancho, um, possibly left. High, Greenwood and, and, and Rashford one side, Cristiano Ronaldo. I think when Manchester United have good possession against 
12 to 14 of the Premier League teams, they could have one holding with Pogba and Bruno Fernandes as a three. He hasn't played a three, Rob, has he? I'm not he saying he has, but, but he hasn't no. had Ronaldo. He's not had Ronaldo. So I'm saying things might have to change. He might have to look at, at that, Rob. Managers can't just be stuck, wedded to a system based and, and, and the new players come in and you don't adapt to those. Thomas Tuchel's shown us that, that he, he's adapted. Brendan Rodgers shows us that he's adapted. Pep's had to adapt. Ollie's going to have to adapt. Two, midfield, two holding midfield players, when you're playing Southampton, when you've actually sometimes played Freddie McTominay or, or McTominay and Pogba, I scratch my head. Why, why are we doing that? He's doing Liverpool it for the foundation. He's doing it. Yeah. yeah, he's doing it for the foundation that that gives Correct. and the Correct. protection of counter-attacking, which they have been a little bit vulnerable. Um, but if, if we keep the ball better, Rob, if we're better in the attacking third, if, if our safety positions, Paul Pogba can still play a hybrid eight and ten. He, he can be between the two. It, it's doable. It's just that people are questioning. Can he do it? Does he want to do it? I'll go back to my old chestnut, Robbie Earl. Artists and soldiers, the team that we've just described, right? Yeah. Is that balance too, too attack, too flair, too attacker minded, not enough defensive kind of uh, stability? When you look at a Chelsea, it's, it's, it's Kajid, Jorginho, and Kante. There's always two players there. Mm. And I've got three, three at the back. Is there too but, many but players you, you, that will go You say on? that, Rob. Uh, it's a good point. You say that. And then I'm, I'm not saying against the top four or maybe six teams, I might, I might throw a Leicester in there, I think, Dan. I might throw a Spurs in there at this time. Probably not Arsenal. Where I think, OK, can't quite go as attacking. I've got to go more of a two. It's interesting you say Chelsea because I think that's a really interesting one. Is Jorginho a better defensive midfield player than Paul Pogba? He'll fill more holes and he'll be more diligent about his defensive responsibilities. No, it, it but I can get your be. point. I get it your can point. Be. I get your it point. Can be. Defensive. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying Paul Pogba motivated, understanding what role and wanting to do it, is a way better defensive midfield player. He's got way better tools than Jorginho and can burst from that position, your your Toure style, and drive the game. Now, I'm I would, saying... Uh, We've seen, I would we've argue. seen glimpses of it. We've seen glimpses of it with Pogba. Right. So the last game against Wolves, the, the last Man United game against Wolves, Wolves had a lot of good chances there, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I know that Paul Pogba played in the middle of the park. Hmm. I get your point about certain teams he might play with two holding players. Yeah. I understand that, but I'm not. I, I think they're vulnerable against other teams as well. I think there's enough teams that will pack it in and counter attack Man United if they haven't got the balance right. And I'm not saying that I always want. I, I just worry that poor Pogba, you know, got away with it against Wolves and they end up winning the game. Fair enough. Like the, all teams don't play great and get the three points. Mm. Well done. I just think over a period of time, that position, and, I, and I'll look at it, I watch it like a hawk as, as if he continues to play there because they've got so many attacking players in other areas that Pogba to be influential is they, going to be better in the middle. I just worry, Rob, that they're going to get caught out in ways that, that viewers don't really see it. They don't really see the spaces that he leaves when a player has got a little well, bit more. You, well, you're making about that. Paul Pogba the, the issue. This is a team issue. This is a, a, a balanced team issue, Rob. It's not just Paul Pogba. It's not just Paul Pogba. Because I, I think I, that, I, that, I, that, that, that demeans that. that, that yeah, that, okay. All right. So, uh, if it, so is there going to be tons of defensive support by Jaden Sancho then, or Mason Greenwood, Rob, okay. if it's more of a team defensive situation? I'm just talking about the balance here. I'm talking about no, the balance. No, I, I the hear you. But, but, but so let's let's talk of Liverpool because we can only make comparisons. When Liverpool are at their best, they have a Fabinho, maybe as a holding. Yep. Jordan Henderson, who can do it, but is not. That's not his, his main game, but can do it. And then he has one next to him, a Kate. Well, it, it was a. It, it was, was a. It was they have tremendous like, defensive support in there. I mean, they're tremendous like defensive. That Liverpool midfield was. But, but they're not. Bad. They're not necessary. Yeah, it's not necessary. Those players weren't bought necessarily like. Oh, they're great defensive. They done off break the game up. They learned to do it in the team because it was an important part of the team, and they could condense you in your half of the pitch with that pressure and intensity. Wasn't so much physicality. Well, it was it was energy physicality. It wasn't tackles and and and, and it, you know, it was Fabinho protecting that back four like, like it was protecting Correct. that back four like you but, like. That's a mindset. Bru, by the way, Bruno Fernandez doesn't get a free ride on this. 
hey, Bru when Bruno, when we have the ball, Bruno Fernandes has to do a better job of being the first point of defence. Paul Pogba, mm. yes, has to do a better job. And the one that we decide, if it's Fred, if it's McTominay, if it's Matic, which needs the upgrade, has yeah. to do a better job. But I think it, it, it becomes more of a group and team thing and less of an individual. I don't Why think Paul Pogba, I don't think if Paul Pogba is just, it becomes a way better defensive midfield player, I don't think that gives Manchester United the title. I don't think that's the problem solved. I think it's. I think. I think it'd be a, a huge addition, Rob, if Pogba somehow became a beast defensively, as well as a beast as he is with his football and his, and, and his assisting passes and that, where he looks a million bucks in his assists. If he could he, add that, he, he'd be a magnificent he player. Be, he, yeah, but he has to be a beast. So he he could be the Jordan Henderson, let, let's say, for Liverpool, who's improved on his defensive side. He wasn't that player when he first went in, based on. Do you know the other person? The Fred is not good enough. The McTominay, you see moments, is I like him. Could I like grow McTominay. into one. Could grow mm. into one. The, the Matic, unfortunately, athletically, can't get around the game strong enough. If they had Declan Rice in that middle of the oh. block sitting there, if they had Calvin yeah. Phillips sitting there, you would get enough from Paul Pogba with that one to be right. defensively strong enough. But because you've got a weakness there, you, you, you're almost going to have to... You're saying, I've got to limit now Pogba or not play Pogba. Well, he, uh, I, I'll ask a question. Why has Paul Pogba played very few games in that position up to now? Because it's not his strength. It's not right. his strength. That's what but I'm he, saying. That's he what can I'm saying. Get, but he can get better, Rob. He can get okay. better. Well, he wasn't Jordan he? Henderson's. I think he yeah, can. He's, 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 a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a talent. He's, a, he's one of those players who could play anywhere, Pogba, if his head was on it. Really. He could play wide and in effect a game. He could play central in effect a game. He could play false nine in effect a game. Yeah, listen, it's something that we differ a little bit and it's yeah. going to be fascinating to see it going forward, mate. I, I, listen, of what Pop has just been playing recently and the mindset that he's in right now, top class, brilliant. I'm just saying if given these new players and Ronaldo and how that affects everybody else and Sancho, if he's going to play in the middle of, middle of the midfield with another one to win this Premier League title, he's got to show real uh, qualities going forward, but also real qualities defensively. Plugging gaps, making uh, challenges, you know, uh, then, let, then... Let me just ask you in finishing, Rob, because I think it's a good yep. question. Would you play him then? Would you play him? And would you play him in those roles? I mean, I, this I, is I, a question, isn't it? We, we, I want to win yeah. the title. I've got Ronaldo yeah. now. I've got my set up there. I've got the guy in the back, who, who, Varane, who, who I think is the partner. I've got two decent full-backs, an informed goalie. I've got a lot of good pieces. Now, if my worry is that, Rob, and I've got to make a big call, what, yeah. what, what, what are you saying? Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust him, Rob. I, I would have, I would have, I would have flipping done everything that I could, and they might do in the future to get Declan Rice. I would prefer Pogba in an area of the field that's a little less crucial defensively, and that for Oligan and Solskjaer's been on the left hand side. Mm. He's drifted in and been really, really good. If that means he's got to compete with Jaden Sancho, Rob, in that position. Maybe I do like the idea of a different system for them, you know, with a four-three-three Pogba. I feel is best in the number eight, you know, in in a yeah, in a, yeah. in a triangle. Three, uh, yeah. yeah. But then it's a bit different for Bruno Fernandez, who's great as mm -hmm. a number ten, brilliant as a number ten. So I get why the system's being continued. And of course, there's a ton of games, and there's, there'll be a load of rotations. I just I would I like poor Pogba with freedom, Rob, and 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 the poor Pogba I want playing in the middle of the park. Yeah, he can't be quite so free because I'd need him to do a job in terms of protection and sniffing out danger and making, you know, because I think that's what's needed in this team. Uh, but it's, I just think it's fascinating, Robbie. Now we'll monitor it, we'll talk yeah, about it. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll keep an eye. I mean, he's always, I, I remember speaking to him um, in the last year and, and it was, you know, we had this conversation. I said, whatever we, whenever Manchester United comes up, Paul Pogba becomes a centre of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he's so good and people get so, so frustrated with him. Um, yeah. He just said he's something I have to live with and, and, and we move on. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye over the course mm -hmm. of the season. Obviously, Ronaldo coming in, we'll see how that affects some of the, you know, the bigger players. You know, the, interesting for, you know, the likes of Jesse Lingard, Rob, and, and Anthony Martial, how much football are they going to see this year? I mean, yeah. you wondered whether they, you know, they would go out in the window or, or not. It's a big squad. 
plenty of rotation, yeah. plenty of competitions. Uh, we'll see yeah. how well he goes. Some other games this week, mate, just before we wrap things up, some, some really interesting games after we come back from the international break. We start off early 7 a.m. Eastern time on NBCSN, which is, I just think, a little cracker we're starting off with. Crystal Palace <laughs> beats Spurs. Yeah. So we've got Patrick's pa- uh, Palace yeah. and Nuno Spurs. And Spurs started particularly well. Palace picking up their first point with a 2-2 draw against West Ham last time out. Um, what are we thinking about? What are we thinking about Tottenham I, I, winning I, I'm, the I'm league? Li- <laughs> I'm liking Tottenham, mate. I know it's early. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, think, things you say now and you feel strongly about now, you know, of course, could come back and, and bite us all on the backside. Mm. But the team is changing. The team is evolving. It's different. Given the transfer window, Christian Romero, like highly respected central defender. Yeah. Emerson Royal, a, 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 a really good, strong defensive player that's got qualities going forward. You could see a five at the back. Tanganga could come in, Robbie Earl, and make a three, mm. three-man three defensive unit with Dyer, uh, with Christian Romero. Which is Nuno's style, three, isn't it? Which is Nuno's well. style with Reg- mm. Sujo Regalon. It's good going forward. Um, you know, we talked about Emerson at right back. Oliver Skip is new to this season. Deli Ali is new to this season. Different players. Hoiberg, we know what you're going to get. And now Harry Kane is staying at the football club. You know, you've got some pace there. And, and if it means that Spurs are going to be more counter attacky than they've been in the past, I don't mind it. Nobody minds a, t- a team that's got a plan and executes it really well. With Hyomin Son, uh, with Bergwijn, Son's an injury doubt, by the way. Um, with Bergwijn yeah. and with Lucas Skip. and with Kane, I yeah, mean that, that's that, a Delhi from midfield. There's there's a interesting looking, powerful Spurs counter attacking predominantly team with a defensive improvement given this transfer window. I, I think it's quietly, you know, going quite well there. Yeah, considering what was going on in the summer, nobody wanted the job. They took the yeah. Kane going and, and, and all kinds of disruption. Good start for Nuno. Nuno's done a great job. And, and what I'm hearing, one or two friends back in, in England are telling me he's really united that, that training ground, mate. He's got people happy again. He's got his arm around people. He's talking to people. Very different from Jose Mourinho and the way that Mourinho went about his business. And, you know, listen, this is a guy who came into the Premier League and, and got walls. Two seven finishes, uh, playing this kind of football with, with probably lesser quality players. So, yeah, uh, totally agree. Love what he's doing there. Uh, like to see Harry Kane get his head down now, start scoring a few goals in the, in the Premier League and um, getting Spurs, you know, keeping Spurs in there. Listen, we talked about four teams. Listen, they're not going to win the title, but it'd be nice to see them stay in there and, and jostle around for, for, for a little bit. Yeah, if one of the top four. Mm. Everybody thinks going to finish in the top four. Have a bad time. Totally possible. Mm. Absolutely mm. possible. And Spurs, Spurs will have a shout. They'll have a shout yeah. if they continue on this pattern. And and back to Nuno, real quick. He's got something about him, Rob, that's likable. He's yeah. very likable. Yeah. Yeah. We met him when he first got mm. the Wolves promoted. And I, it's one of the meetings we've had a ton of meetings with managers and players over the over this eight year period of, of the NBC covering the Premier League. That meeting with Nuno was like, wow. Was yeah. He, yeah. He was one determined, focused, impressive mm. guy in that preseason interview we had. And I think, yeah. you know, even the start he's had, the reaction the fans from him, Rob, and the players' mm. reaction, and the, you know, wow, they got that great start. It's, they've got a bit of ball going here. If they can keep yeah. it going, he's added to the team sensibly. For whatever reason, you know, we've talked about it a lot, Rob. Harry Keane is, is there. And it, yeah. with the professional that he is, he's going to be fired up. I just think they're mm. an interesting team to watch. And a lot of people yeah. are poo-pooing it. Oh, they ain't got the quality, whatever. Okay, that's fair enough. I'm just, I just kind of like what I'm seeing, given the pieces, given Delhi, given Skip, given the new signings defensively. Yeah, could be interesting. A few injuries this weekend could be up to yes. six key players. I mean, obviously some from from travel problems, quarantine and injuries, yeah. quarantine, and, and, and son, and obviously Skip picked up a knock in the under twenty one. So, but I tell you the one thing I guarantee you when Nuno comes out and does his press conference. No excuses, mate. He doesn't allow it. Just didn't no. have him at Wolves when they're playing all those games in Europa and that. Won't allow him with Spurs as well. So, yeah, good one to look forward to. And obviously, yeah. keep an eye on, on Patrick at Palace. Yeah. Big game, my friend, at the Emirates. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Arsenal, 10 o'clock kickoff uh, on Peacock. Arsenal, Norwich. Um, Arsenal, Norwich, I think four games into a, a, a Premier League would not get the headlines that this one is getting, my friend. Must must win football day for, for, for Mikel Arteta. Anything but, Rob. And, and I, I, honestly, I, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but social media is going to blow up. 
Well, I, I listened to another one that made me laugh on the radio yesterday. A relegation six-pointer, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what kind of this one is. Um, you are right. This is it. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I've been a bit more supportive of, of the mm. philosophy. It's pretty obvious what they've, the road they've gone down with trying to develop younger players and build a team for the future. Uh, I listened to Mikel Arteta yesterday saying that I get that's our philosophy, but I get the importance mm. of now. And he's got to get how important this game is. There's some yeah. games, Rob, that can be defining, really. They've had a very, very tough start through their own poor performances, plus the fixture schedule and their injuries, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. This, um, I'm not sure I like the phrase must win, but it's it's mm. super important that Arsenal play yeah. well the and do points. what's expected. And do what's yeah. expected. Yeah, it's it's expected. Point, yeah. isn't it? You're at home against yeah. newly promoted Norwich, one of the weaker teams in the league, Who've you know let you play together and let you play and, and and not seen as you know a Brentford I think we saw the atmosphere we saw the style of play we saw a bit of physicality that, that upset yeah. them Norwich aren't going to bring that if Norwich outplay you at the Emirates and 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 get a result then yeah we, we, we're starting you know you're going to burn, you're going to Burnley the week after and then you go to Tottenham you go to Tottenham in the North London derby. That, that's not good. And, and I know there's been talk during this window of Antonio Conte and whether they were trying to make contact with him. I think somebody would be getting on the phone if that one did. So, yeah, important game for Arsenal. Leicester Man City's got a nice flavour about it. Always interesting in this game. Leicester beat Man City, was it last season? Was it 4-5-4 four, four or something like that? Um, Vardy got a couple of goals, didn't he? Remember the Jamie Vardy? Yeah. yeah. Scored against Man Manchester City. Uh, and it's a City team has talked about the goalkeeping situation. So Edison could be banned. Zach Steffen's got COVID. So it could be Scott Carson having to be in goal, depending on what comes out of these FIFA conversations. Um, so not an easy one for City. Certainly never easy going to to, to left at the KP. Um, Brendan Rodgers and, and his team. But a uh, good chance for, for Manchester City and, and to see where they are. Leicester's not quite been the start. Maybe they would have liked a few uh, injuries and a few bad defensive errors that have cost them in games. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I think Man City were still kind of watching them, Rob. And of course, we're mm. all cognizant of last season when they didn't start yeah. well, and we all started to worry about you know the players and stuff. That they was the message getting a little old. Obviously, they rebounded superbly well. But yeah. I also I do I I do put this in that category of they've already lost one game, Rob Man City. And yeah. if, if it's not a great performance and, and Leicester totally capable, as you said, of they beat him last year, of winning this game, you know, does City really fancy the, the tough road back? Maybe they'll do it again that like they did last year. Mm. So I think even though it's really early, I just think sometimes you can get a bit of a sense of what, what the squad fe feeling like and, and, and how they might look for the rest of the season. This is a little bit of an indicator, early one, but an indicator for Man City. And they could, if they go out there and, and blow City, uh, Leicester City away with their football, yeah. then like, wow, they're still at it. They've still got tremendous mm. quality, you know, and some people have them favourites to win the title and and maybe rightly so. But I just think it's an well, interesting game, Rob. It's, this, I, this, this weekend's full of them. Yeah, and I just think that it, with City, the continual story is going to be the false nine, where they're not getting a yeah. centre forward. Mm -hmm hurt them or you know Pep's going to be able to find a way as he did last season yeah. so yeah. um yeah challenge for, for Pep and City at Leicester uh Saturday then we, we got Chelsea Villa uh again interesting watch Chelsea always a good watch 12 30 p.m Eastern time on big NBC yeah. uh get another look at Chelsea Rob impressive uh coming out 1-1 draw against Liverpool at Anfield down to 10 men just before half time, I think we, we we both talked about we were on a conference call this morning that the organisation, the discipline, the different ways of playing, the Lukaku missing piece, the groups together. Uh, Thomas Tuchel looks a serious dude, um, you know, and and they I can see why many people uh, fancy them. The one thing, one of the things that uh, I took away that he said before the Liverpool game, I've heard him say about after the Liverpool game is this this team are prepared to suffer, Rob. They don't. Yeah. They're prepared to to to, to go deep. Oh, and we've see, seen it. We've come seen out, it. Come out the mm. other side. We've not seen that of all the other top four teams yet. We yet to see when and if they suffer, how they react. I think Chelsea have already shown us that they're they're prepared to go as as far as it takes to to try and win it this time. You know my phrase and Robin, and then my favourite word is just durability. Mm. This this Chelsea team. They showed the durability in the Liverpool game, as you said. They were so they had to suffer a little bit with the work they had to do to secure that point. Mm. Um, 
I've seen them play expansive and create and score goals and win games. Uh, I've seen them play counter-attacking. We know that Lukaku gives them a whole different uh, range of ways to hurt their opponents, which is going to be crucial going forward. And also, just on a bigger picture of Chelsea, Rob, it's something like, if you think about it, you think about momentum and just spirit. I mean, you think about from the day he took over, like there's there was a sense of excitement. Of course, the league form went from average to really, really great. Mm. They go on this incredible run in the Champions League final and win it against most people's prediction. Mm. Now they go into the summer window. They bring in a massive Simon Lukaku. They bring in Saul as well. It's like they are they're on the crest of a of a wave, like Liverpool were, Rob, a few seasons ago, where they they didn't quite win the title, but they were like they got really close, and then they won the Champions League. And it's like building to a crescendo. Mm. It, 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 it's all pointing in in the desire of drive, of of it's their time. Chelsea to win the Premier League. That's why I went for them to win the Premier League. And I think that's that mm-hmm. feeling is quite strong. And I think when when you're in a situation where you feel something, and we, I, I'm sure we've had it in our different little levels of the game, yeah. when you win something, when you feel something special is happening, it's real. And it just mm-hmm. gives an extra bit of momentum for the players, the, just the belief and the energy that they'll put into a game to get it done. I just feel Chelsea are, are right in a nice spot in terms of the squad, in terms of the cover, in terms of youth and experience and, and a manager that's fired up and rolls his sleeves up and drives the team forward. Um, yeah, like like what they're doing so far. Only three games in, of course, and there's going to be, you know, some some peaks and troughs through the way. But yeah, uh, yeah they started as as I as most people have thought, pretty strong. Yeah, absolutely. And just get the sense that it feels like to me they're in good hands. They're, they're in the hands of somebody who, who's yeah, got they're in a good spot. Con- control of everything. And then Sunday, mate, we, we've got one more big one. Uh, it'll be a full Ellen Road. His leads take on Liverpool. Uh, again, we we, 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 sh- we saw Liverpool trying to break down a, a 10 man man, uh, Chelsea, not able to do it. The Leeds team who've not quite hit re- real form, but Dan James coming in is a huge boost. Talk about him possibly starting in this game. It's going to be interesting where he fits him in with Rafinha one side and um, Jack Harrison the other side. I'm not sure, you yeah. know, he's a wide man, Dan James. That's where he gets his, his position. Whether someone like Jack Harrison could come inside, Robin, plays one of those middle ten like he's played. Uh, he also might play Dan James Fabinho. in there, Rob. He might, he might play Dan yeah. James in like a Rodrigo yeah, position. Central, or Rodrigo, central. that central driver for, yeah. for midfield. But, um, yeah. yeah, looking forward to this one because we haven't quite seen the, the best of Leeds. They've not kicked into gear yet. Um, and and I, I think that's that's not far off coming against a, a Liverpool team that have found their way, you know, so far. Uh, two good wins, two wins and, and a, a draw against Chelsea. We're looking to, you know, I think hit home the, the point that they're, they're part of the race this time. Yeah, they are. They are. They, they believe that. It is up to Jurgen Klopp to, to kind of insist on the highest standards, Rob, because that's what made them great a few years ago. Um, you know, last season, through different reasons, it wasn't quite there. And the big question is, we've probably spoke on every chat about Liverpool, is just whether they've got the stomach to go again, really, and to be perfect. So far, they've had a really good start. Um, yeah, couldn't find a way through through Chelsea's 10 men, but important players back defensively. Harvey Elliott being a bonus in midfield that looks very mm. different to the midfield players they've got, which I think is important to have something different in that role. I know Mo Salah's negotiating a new contract right now, Rob, that's going to be really important. Like to tie him up and get him happy is really important for Liverpool because there's going to be a ton of clubs that would be interested if he doesn't sign a new contract mm. and his contract starts to lessen in terms of its length. So, you know, I think Firmino, with this this uh, FIFA five-day thing, there's doubts on Alisson, Fabinho and yeah. Firmino. Uh, Harvey Elliott there was an injury doubt. Uh, Minamino is out as well. So that's just your injury news going into it. But Leeds away, we've got full um, pitch, pitch side representation, but Arlo yeah, and Graham yeah. are going to be on site. Um, mm. This is uh, Sunday, isn't it? 11.30 yeah, big Eastern up, yeah. time. So uh, our fans and viewers yet and listeners to this podcast, Rob, maybe haven't seen it, Ellen Road, when it's when it's busy mm. and it's and it's flying yeah. and the passion and the fans there, it's pretty sp- a special yeah. place. You know, we've played there tons of times. I had mm. I, I, one of my worst ever days there, actually, in, in getting relegated at Leeds back in 1997. Uh, but wow, it's some place, mm. some club, some bunch of fans. So that's going to be should be a great atmosphere. 
Uh, Alan Road can, can, in some respects, so mirror what Anfield does for Liverpool, Alan Road yeah. does for Leeds. It, it, it did not galvanise that team. And you, we'll, you'll see another speed, you'll see another level of play out, out of these Leeds players. So, as you say, really mm. looking forward to that one. And we've got to our build-up ahead of the game from 9.30 Eastern Time on NBCSN. So, um, that wraps it up for this week, my friends. There was, I think, two massive returns in world football over the last week. There was a return from birthday celebrations, a trip to UK from Robbie Musto, and there was a return for the other guy, Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know if you've heard of me. He returns to Manchester United. <laughs> He's going to be wearing the famous number seven jersey, possibly even this Saturday at home to Newcastle. We can't find next podcast. That's on Sunday, September the 12th, when we'll look back on all those games from match week four and Ronnie's return. We'll talk about Chelsea, we'll talk about Spurs, we'll look at Manchester City, how they go on at Leicester. And that Leeds game against Liverpool at a full Ellen Road should be an absolutely good watch. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, be healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.